Okay, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is um, a very good day and um, I'm particularly very excited and I'm just going to go straight to the point. And this is very, very um, interesting what we are having today. And we've been doing a series for some time now. We've been doing this 49 Days Life Challenge. Today is actually the 12th day which means that we have had 11 episodes before now. Every day since July 1st. We've had it on July 1, we've had it July 2. We've had it straight down to July 11th, which was yesterday. Peter Bless, you're welcome. Now today we are here again to do what we've been doing all along, to learn about life, to learn about money, to get things that we can apply immediately. Yesterday we discussed about how Debit a lot is what makes a person wealthy or rich and not credit a lot. I explained that most people, most people, 80% of the people, in fact, more than 80% of the people, usually will focus on credit a lot. And that if you do not learn how to behave differently from people, from the majority, you are going to have the kind of result that majority of the people have. Now, the kind of result that majority, majority of people have is the same result of poverty. For, for example, over 70 million people live below $1 a day. And over, over 90% of Nigerian population live below $500. I mean, $500 a day is too, too much in that sense. Live, be, live below $10 a day. Okay? So... So that should tell you something. It should tell you that what you need to start to do is to think differently from what the masses, from the way the masses think. That should tell you that you should behave differently. That should tell you that you should see differently. That should tell you that you should act differently. Okay. So what is first available to you as information is what is mainstream. What is first available to you as information is what you find in everywhere. Okay. What you what you what is first available to you is the information that you see everywhere. Moldova, you're welcome. Jenny Stacco, you're welcome. Good to have good to have you guys around. Good to have you guys around. Moldova, this is your first time. Peter Bless is the first person to appear today. Hopefully, uh, Peter Bless is set up for a weekend giveaway. Okay, so now I have told you that one of the things that is first readily available to you. Is what you see in the mainstream media all right now mainstream media is what everybody watches there's nobody who who does not listen to news even from radio okay there's nobody who does not um, um, see music videos and things like that there's nobody who is not exposed to advert from big corporations all right so nobody will blame you for listening to mainstream media nobody will blame you if the information that is available to you is the same information that is available to everyone else. However, you need to ask yourself, you need to ask yourself, what do people know? What do people know? Some few people, what do they know that I don't know? Or you need to ask yourself, okay, well, so all these people that me and them, we are listening and hearing the same thing. So we all have the same result. So what am I going to do? Am I going to continue to be like them or I'm going to find a different information? Okay, so and I told you that this is the same principle that I needed you to apply. The event guy, you're welcome. You hear me? You're welcome. You're welcome. Good to have you guys. Good to have you guys. So the, the way the way it's happening this morning is that the ladies are entering in batches. Like four ladies enter and then now two guys. So you people are doing a uh, girls batch and male batch. Okay, so this morning I just came online straight and I started talking. I didn't even wait. <laughs> okay, because because I have a lot of things in my mind and I just need to get this thing out immediately. I don't want it to take so long or anything. You guys are welcome. I'm doing quick recap on yesterday. Yesterday I explained how it is debit a lot that makes a person wealthy and not credit a lot. And I'm doing a recap because it is very important that people internalize these lessons. A lesson that is not internalized will not be acted upon. A lesson that is not acted upon is useless. I mean, a person who knows something and does not do it, <clears throat> excuse me, a person who knows something and does not do it is not different from a person who does not know that thing. There's no difference between knowing something and not knowing it if there is no action. 
all right so debit a lot is what makes a person wealthy people don't know people think it's credit a lot and that is how majority of people think and because that is how majority of people think majority of the people are also broke or poor or semi-poor all right you don't want to be in that category you do not want to be in that category you want to be in the category where you are rich Samavad, you're welcome good to have you you want to be in the category where you're rich where you're doing well so i have told you yesterday that your debit alerts are subject to your decisions your decisions are the only thing that you have control over your credit alert is a consequence that is consequence of other people's decision other people's decision cannot make you rich what can make you rich is your own decision and i explained to you that there are three levels of wealth or keda in a society the low level the middle level and the high level and then at low level what you do with your money mostly you call it spending people spend money at that level people spend money which means that what you are exposed to at that level is what you call spending decisions now you want to be in a place where you reduce what you call your spending decisions and increase what you call your investment decisions but however it's a gradual process you can go as fast as you want to go but it is it's, it first starts with knowing all right so what do you know what you should know is that your spending decisions has to be decisions that influences other people's decision to credit you and that comes in series of categories it may come as a hat doing advert for something that you do it may come it may come as improving visibility getting people to know you it may come in investment in your own personal branding so that people can trust you and see you as a person of integrity it may come as a form of gift to somebody who has done something good to you so that you can keep being on their mind so that they can mention your name where decisions are being made it could be a lot of things but the whole idea is that your decisions has to be in such a way that you are deciding that what you do with money would impact or influence other people's decisions to credit you so what is in your control is what will make you wealthy not what is not in your control i emphasize that it is possible that a person will owe you money and then you still won't get the money so even if somebody were to owe you money and it was your money until the person decides to pay there's nothing you can do about it i'm telling you you can take the person to court and the person can still file for bankruptcy and the person file for bankruptcy the person is saying look i have no dime whatsoever anywhere that becomes bad debt you are never getting it so there's nothing like being entitled properties by nk you're welcome you're welcome there's nothing about being entitled the question here is what are you going to do and the task i gave yesterday is I told people to go and get their statement of account for June. Get your statement of account for June and check how many of your decisions were geared towards influencing other people's decision to credit you in the month of July. It's as simple as that. How many? What percentage? Out of every 10 transactions, how many transactions was geared towards influencing other people to credit you? There is no shortcut to that. There is no shortcut to that anywhere. I wish that there were shortcuts or alternatives to that, but there isn't. It does not exist. A person will become whatever it becomes by decisions. And the idea about how to make decisions is to make this kind of information available to you so that you know. So that you stop being like the majority of people who focus on credit alerts Whereas, do not focus on their debit alert. Soup Express Kitchen, you are welcome. Good to have you. I told you that the... the <laughs> okay, so anyways. Now, now, it is important for you to know that. That was yesterday. What do I want to talk about today? What do I want to talk about today? Today, I want to talk about this money. What for? What is this money for? This money that we've been shouting all along. We're just, we're just talking about money. Why are we so... Why, why am I, for example, so fixated on money? What is the idea? Why? Why? You even, you that are even on the live, why do you want money? Why do you want this money? What do you want to do with this money? What should you do with this money? What should you know about money? What are the things that people should know? What is it that everybody should know about money? What is that thing that the people who are wealthy understand about money that you do not understand? And I'm going to go straight to the point today. This morning, okay, maybe because it's Monday and I mean, I'm, I, I, in my mind, I feel like 
I feel like no bullshit kind of you know mode. That's that's how I feel this morning. Okay. Now, now one thing that you need to realize is that the people who have money understand understand that they are in the custody of decision. There is nothing like having money. Having money is an illusion. Yesterday I told you that saving money, keeping money is an illusion. Okay? Now, I want to show you today that having money is an illusion. There is nothing like having money. There is nothing like having money. Eventually, money comes down to digits in your bank account. Eventually, money comes down to paper somewhere. Paper is paper. If you put fire to paper, it will burn. So, it's not like... a and when you print 1,000 to you can't catch fire. You will catch fire, it will burn very well. In fact, it will burn no different from, from, uh, from a paper that a child used to do drawing and draw one, zero, and stick leg, you know, stick, stick, stick people. That, you know that drawing, that stick drawing people. Okay, if you burn that paper that you had that drawing and you burn 1,000 notes, both of them will burn. So, there was a story about a man who burnt dollars to, to, to stay warm with he and his daughter. Somebody was very, very rich. So, money, having money is also an illusion. You must get out of that illusion. You must understand that what makes a person rich is the size of the decision that he can make with money. Let me explain to you. I need, I, I need, I need, you, to get, I need you to get this very clearly. Okay? So, money... Is digits just numbers just basically numbers to to measure value okay one two three four two trillions to quintillions of dollars let's assume that the old money that exists in the world today is quintillion dollars okay all right so that's like zero 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 there's plenty of so that's about 18 zeros or thereabouts okay yeah you know that kind of a thing all right now all of these zeros all of these digits all of these zeros how many of those zeros can you personally make decision on? And say, I want you to go there. How many can you make decision on? Do you know, the, do you know how you know the one that you can make decision on? The one in your bank account. That's, the, that's your quota. That's the one that you are in custody of making decisions about. That's the one that you are in custody of making decisions about. So, when you say a person is wealthy, when you see a person around you and say this person is wealthy, what you are saying, in your, what you are saying, sometimes people say, this person has money. No, no, this person, nobody has money. Nobody has, money is not, money does not belong to anybody. That is why people say that money run away, money will just run. The money has gone, the money has gone. Do you notice that people always talk about money as if money was oppressing? Yeah. So that should tell you that otherwise, if it was possible to have money, then it means that you should be able to tie money down and say, money or you can't go. And the reason you even use the word I want to tie money down is because you understand that money is like something that is that is alive. If you do not tie it down, it will go. However, it is still poor mindset. Tying money down is still a poor mindset. Okay? The rich mindset, like I told you yesterday, will be to send money on a errand. And I explained to you that yesterday, I explained to you yesterday that you should see money as a restless servant, a servant that has a lot of energy and that just needs to do things. Okay, so now when you say a person has money, this person is ah, this person has money. What you are saying is that this the custody of decision of money, the size of a person's custody is big. For example, if you have one billion naira in your account, in your corporate account, whatever account, in whatever capacity, whether because of the entity you have built, you know what I. Whether it's personal, I, I'm not really focused on semantics this morning. But let's assume that you have one billion dollar in your account. Okay, you have one billion dollar in your account. That means that you have the custody of decision to the size of one billion dollars. You have custody of decision to the tune of one billion dollars. So you can decide where one billion dollar goes. That is that is the meaning of having money. That's what people say when they say somebody has money. How you know that nobody has money is that when a person dies, his money does not. His money does not die with him. The money disappears or the money is used by other people. Even, let me tell you, let me tell you, people can enter back door and give this chance to your money. The banks do it all the time. You feel that you keep money in your bank. Meanwhile, they've used it. They've sent your money on errand. So, so don't fool yourself as thinking that the fact that you are not doing anything with money, then the money is not doing anything. That's a lie. 
What you call your money is already doing something somewhere. All my bills, you're welcome. Good to have you. Good to have you on the show this morning. Okay? So, you must realize that you are a custodian of money. You are, you are, everybody is a, is a custodian. Which means that you get to decide what happens to some particular amount or number of digits. Always, always identified by the things that enter into your account, credit alerts or things like that, the things that enter into your account. So, now, understanding that will now take me to being able to explain to you crystal clear what money is for. If you understand that money is a restless servant and that you are just a custody or a custodian of decision, you understand that therefore money is for other people. Money is for other people. Money is not for you. When I say money is not for you, I'm not saying I'm not saying you're not going to buy the things that money can buy. No, you will buy the things that money can buy. In fact, you could buy you could buy a private jet. Okay? But have you ever wondered that if you are the only one alive, if you are the only one alive, do you think you need a private jet? Do you think you need a private jet? Do you think you need, if you are the only one alive and you are not going to go and see anybody, and nobody was suppressing you anywhere, you are not going for any meeting with anybody anywhere, and even, even if you had all the waterfall everywhere and there are beautiful things to see, and you could go and see all of the beautiful things, but you have nobody to report it to because if you put it on Instagram, nobody's going to see it, nobody's going to like it, nobody's going to do anything, nobody's going to... Do you think that you will need a private jet? No. You will not need a private jet because it won't matter. It won't matter. So what does that tell you? It tells you that money always comes after the subject of people. Money is for experience money is so that you can better other people's life there is no two ways to it there is a movie called uh the the men who built america so the thing that happened to to um these people at the end of their life jp morgan and um this other name is escaping me this other name is escaping me when they all competed and had a lot of money and they realized that they had to give it back they they realized can you imagine that imagine after amassing billions that the lesson you're about to learn after amassing billions is to finally find out that you have to give it back like give it back or not do business with it not not um not i want to borrow you so you now pay me back in with interest to not something like that not something like that that you that they realize that now they have to give it back. Why? Why? Why do you think that that is now the biggest lesson to hear after that? Please come let me close this up, please. Thank you. You know, why do you realize, Olali you are welcome. Why do you think that that is now the ultimate lesson after a person has learned business development, marketing, um, business meeting, decision making, building business, starting business, employing people, firing people, uh, uh, avoiding tax instead of evading tax, uh, paying tax, being on the good side of government, learning how to use money to influence policies, and um, building a living environment, and uh, having good personal branding, having good business branding, and everything. Money management, you know, you're lawyer, you're welcome. Money management and everything. Imagine that after a person has learned all of those difficult things, what the person comes back to realize is that you now ask to give it away that can you imagine that should tell you that should tell you let me tell you let me tell you let me tell you whatever it is that you are going to spend the latter part of your life to do is better for you to understand that thing now so that it's not strange to you my point is it is good to have the end in mind it is good to start but it is better to have the hand in mind, otherwise you go in the wrong direction. So a lot of people do not have money because they are thinking about themselves alone. You are too small for yourself. Do you understand? You are too small for yourself. You are too small for yourself. As a focus, as a focus, focusing on yourself is a small thing. It is small people who do that. Big people, great people always focus on people, lots of people, 
lots of people big agenda agenda that covers millions and millions and millions of people that's how you know that the person is big you know that a person is big by the size of his focus. If you are focusing on yourself alone, look, looking for money to buy a car, that is a poor thing to do. I realized that <laughs> I, I, it, it cost me several years to realize that. How I just wanted to buy a car. How I just wanted to buy a car. How I just wanted to buy a car. I just wanted to buy a car. If the first time I finally bought a car was after I was helping people to make money. And then the money for the car just appeared like as if it's been hiding. You cannot focus on yourself. You have to understand that your personal success is going to be a byproduct of other people's success. Whether you like it or not. If you are earning fat salary, it means that you are helping your employer to succeed. That's the only way you are even earning fat salary. Have you ever seen anybody who was not helping their employer to succeed and they were earning fat salary? It's not possible. It's not possible. What you do for other people is what you do for yourself. What you do for your, what you do for other people is the thing that you do for yourself. What you do for yourself does not exist. It's going to disappear. So, what is this money for? This money, what is it for? This money is for creating better experiences for people. Better experiences for people. It does not matter in what capacity, but you have to understand that this money is for creating better, making this world better, making your generation better. Maybe for your children, maybe for your, maybe for your your people coming after you, your children's children, and, and everything. Do you understand? Okay. So you must understand. I'm abused. You say except and your politicians. Where are they? How many politicians have you seen that? that got into power and then became successful enough for other people to recommend their children. How many? How many? How many? Very few. The ones who are able to do that were the ones who did it right. There's no way. There's just no way. In fact, the facts are right in front of us. No way. No way. No way. It has not happened. It won't happen because, you see, when you are starting a business, when you are starting a business, they will tell you that your business has to have a soul. There has to be something that your business wants to achieve other than profit. That profit is the byproduct of creating an experience or experience of you based on the soul of your business. Your business has to have a soul. There has to be what you are trying to achieve other than profit. There is no business that has succeeded outside that. There is no business that has succeeded just for money. There's no business. There's no business that succeeded just for money. No way. You will have to go find a soul. And let me, guess what? Your soul, the soul of your business will never be about you. Never, ever. Never, ever. I spent so much time today. These are the things that I put now. Money is for life. Money is for the living. Money is for the experience. Money is to fix, fix things. Money is to fix people. Money is to fix the environment. Money is for other people so that they can use it for other people. Praise Adirak by your welcome. Stop focusing on yourself. Start thinking about how you can help other people. The day you unlock that, the day that you unlock that, that is the day that you become rich. In fact, the day that you unlock that, this is the day you become rich, it's just a matter of time before you become rich physically. It's just a matter of time before the money reflects in your bank account. Money is for life. Money is for the living. Money is for the experience that you give other people. Money is to fix things. Money is to fix people. Money is to fix the environment. Money is for other people so that they can help other people. That is what money is for. Thank you very much, Aimee Nolayola. I am very, very invested in your success. I'm rooting for you big time. And I want you to succeed. And I definitely will see you succeed. Thank you. Bye, bye, bye.